Really quick, before we jump into today's episode, I want to tell you about the new Leadership Accelerator Workshops from Better Everyday Studios. Twice a month, I host up to 25 business leaders just like you to learn about and practice one key skill for being a better leader. We cover topics like building trust, giving feedback, setting goals, and more. These sessions are only 30 minutes long, so there is no fluff at all, just actionable takeaways. To sign up, use the link in the episode description below, or go to bettereverydaystudios.com forward slash accelerator. That's bettereverydaystudios.com forward slash accelerator. I look forward to seeing you there. Now let's get into the episode. What is the number one goal of your team And does everybody on the team know what it is? If the answer to that question is, I don't know or no, then this is an episode for you. My name is Matt Jertsen. I'm a former Air Force instructor pilot, former head of training and development at SpaceX, and now I am the founder of Better Everyday Studios, a leadership development company that focuses on helping technical organizations make better managers. When you're a manager, it can sometimes be hard to know exactly what your role is, right? There's your, especially if you're a frontline manager, you are just an individual contributor and you probably still have all of that work to do. Um, You're responsible for, you know, approving leave and, you know, doing performance management and giving feedback and all this kind of stuff. But I think there's an argument to be made that one of the most critical roles for any manager is the ability to communicate and set a clear vision. So if, you haven't seen this show before, you haven't watched it in a while. We're in the middle of a series right now where we're diving into something that's called Google's Project Oxygen. This was a project that they did, that they ended back in 2008 that was designed to answer the question, do managers matter? And they came up with eight behavior. First, they said, yes, managers do definitely matter. And then they identified eight behaviors that make great managers. So we're in the middle of this series. Each episode of the series, we're looking at two different behaviors. Very often, these behaviors can kind of clash. In this case, it's kind of, they kind of build on one another. So the two behaviors that we're going to focus on today are first, be a good communicator, listen and share information. That, that, that whole thing is the behavior. And then the second one is have a clear vision and strategy for the team. And I think these two actually go hand in hand where, you know, in order to first, you have to be a good communicator and we'll dive into that. But then one of the most important things for you to communicate is that vision and strategy. When it comes to being a communicator, I really love the way they added the distinction of listen and share information. It reminds me of many years ago, I was in a leadership development seminar where the facilitator would always say, managers are not communicated to, they're communicated through. A big part of what your role as a manager is is just passing information both up and down, right? And you're making sure the right information gets passed up and down because that information sharing is one of the critical things for successful, high-performing teams. There's this fantastic book by General Stanley McChrystal called Team of Teams where Stanley, General McChrystal, he was the general in charge of U.S. Special Operations Command in Iraq back in 2008. And when he came in, it was just all this dysfunction. Teams were going all over the place. There were, you know, operations were happening concurrently and they're getting in each other's ways. And what he did is he tried to transform Special Operations Command using this concept that he called shared consciousness. The goal was to try to make sure that as many people as possible, absolutely everyone had the relevant information so that they could make decisions. And that's your goal as a manager. You're trying to make sure that people on your team have the information that they need in order to make good decisions. But then you also need to make sure that the executives above you or whoever it is above you has all the information from, from your team members so that they can make the best information. Really, really critical. So that means that you have to be listen, constantly listening to everything that you can above, below, next to you. I, I just love, you know, when I used to be inside of companies, I would always just kind of, I, I would never put headphones on, right? Because I wanted to hear the conversations that were happening around me. So as I'm doing my work, if I hear a key phrase or a key word, I kind of like, oh, what, what, what's that going on? You're not, don't get me wrong. You're not eavesdropping on people, okay? But you just need to be aware of what's happening around you. And then also, of course, during one-on-ones, actually listening to what people are saying. And then you're constantly processing and trying to share that information out with as much, with, with as many people as possible. 
So knowledge sharing, knowledge information, that, that's really important. But it turns out that's not enough if you want people to be able to make good decisions because it's not just a matter of having the information. It's knowing the lens through which you view that information. You know, when I was, I used to do speech and debate in both high school and college, and we had this thing called the the criteria, which was something that you would put forward. And the criteria would be like, as I said before, the lens through which you're judging the debate. And so one example of a criteria might be like utilitarianism, where it's it's all about the, the ends the end result, that, that's the thing that you, you care about the most. The utility of a thing is what you're really trying to understand and judge. The, the means don't matter. It's, it's like the ends. And I don't know if that's true. I'll cut all that up. But of course, just having the information isn't enough to make good decisions. In order to make a good decision, you also have to kind of have a lens through which to view that information. And the lens could come from a lot of different ways, you know, but mainly it comes from what are we trying to achieve, right? And so like an organization will set, you know, a vision and a strategy for a whole company, right? Where, you know, is this a time where we're really focusing on profit or is this a time where we're really focusing on growth? Right. I think that's that's a clear one that happens in a lot of startups and a lot of tech companies. You know, you go back a few years and all of Silicon Valley, it was just like growth at all cost. Everybody was losing money, but didn't matter. We're just trying to grow. If growth is is the thing that you are trying to achieve, you're going to be making very different decisions than if profitability is the number one concern. Right. And so the organization is likely going to, as long as, long as it's a functioning organization, is going to have some kind of vision set for what the organization is trying to achieve. So you as a manager, your role is to take that vision and translate it into something that matters for your team. And we had a great episode a few episodes ago with a woman named Holly Betke, who we had a great discussion around this idea of setting a mission and vision for your individual team. There's lots of ways you can do it. I highly recommend you go listen to that episode. But by putting together these two behaviors of high-performing managers, of being a good communicator and having a clear vision, really what you're doing is you're making sure that people have all the information they need to make good decisions. And then you're providing them kind of, you know, the lens they need to judge that information. And with those two things together, that's how the individuals on your team can be empowered. Because earlier in this video series, we talked a little bit about empowerment and you want to be empowering and not micromanaging your team. One of the common reasons why managers feel like they can't empower their team is because they're making the wrong choices. They're making the wrong choices because they don't have all the information. They don't know what to do with that information. So if you want to not micromanage, let your team do their job, which will overall let your whole team be more productive Then focusing on communication and setting a vision is really what you need to focus on. I hope this helped you. Hope you got some good nuggets out of this. Again, I'm really enjoying this series. Make sure if you haven't seen them already, go back and watch the two episodes before this. Make sure you stick around so you watch the two episodes after this. And I will see you next time on the Leadership Launchpad. Thank you so much for listening to today's show. If you are looking for help turning your organization's great engineers into great managers, me and my team at Better Everyday Studios would love to help. We deliver targeted and interactive training workshops that are designed to help build the three fundamental skills of any new manager, building trust, giving feedback, and setting goals. Reach out to me through matt at bettereverydaystudios.com so we can start making your organization better every day.